Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy our content. Now, as you may have gathered from the description of this video, we're going to look at automating uh, virtual box. So first we've navigated already to the virtual box uh, directory where the installation took place and we're going to start using the virtual manager.exe with the parameters in order to create a virtual machine. So you're going to be able to see the commands that are used on screen along with the text and I'm going to narrate my way through this. So the first thing we've done is we've registered a virtual machine. That effectively creates a blank machine. Now, next on our list, we're going to go ahead and effectively set the CPU and memory for that machine. So, from this point of view, um, think of it this way. Once the machine's created, you need to add all the hardware to it, and then from that, you can move forward. So, at this point, we're registering the RAM, which in this case is in megabytes. And the same goes for storage later on. All the allocation is done in megabytes. We've also set the boot option to DVD. So it will first boot to the DVD drive, which for mounting purposes later will become particularly useful. Now with that said, we're going to go ahead and also add the network. So we'll call this NIC1, uh, NIC2, 3, and 4 if you were to add additional networks. So but NIC1 is all we're going to use. And we're adding this to our NATed network, and the network is also called NAT network. So this is the LAN that we use for everything else. Now we're also giving it an OS type. Uh, this helps VirtualBox define what is going to be used later. In this case, we're using the Ubuntu 64. It could be Windows, it could be Ubuntu 32, or any of the Linux derivatives that it supports. Now we're adding the first storage controller. This one is the EDI controller. This is the one that I will use for mounting um, effectively DVDs or ISO files later. Uh, we're then going to add the second storage controller. This will be our SATA controller. This is the one we're actually going to mount the OS uh, hard disk to. So first we need to create the controller before we can mount the storage to it. So this is going to be an Intel um, controller. Nothing super great about that just that that's one of the only options you get um, just so just be aware of it and if you're looking at the speed of which I'm typing you realize that I looked at it and went wait did I get that the right way around so it is kind of important um, now once both of those are done we'll be able to create the storage in which we will mount to the volume so this is a slightly different command um, from the previous ones so we've had the modify VM and we've had the storage CTL this one is a create HD so as the, the file description would be create hard disk uh, you tell it the file point so this is basically where the physical file will sit so in this case it's going to sit on my D drive it's going to sit in a folder called VM and I'm going to call it IO the same as the VM itself and then dot the VDI file. So I'm telling in this case again megabytes so I'm going to format it and that's a 10 gig. So that's a straightforward simple command for creating a 10 gig partition. Obviously you'd add an extra zero if you wanted 100 gig and so on and so forth and you would create as many of those as you needed if you were to have subsequently two or three drives and you'd create potentially two or three files. Uh, next on our list, we're going to need to mount that storage. So we're going to attach the storage. So this is the attach command. Again, to the uh, actual VM that we're connecting it to. And then we're going to tell it to which storage controller. So we can see we go back to our earlier point where we say this is the SATA controller on port 0, device 0. It, now that could be the same SATA controller with multiple ports and multiple devices. So you can have effectively many running off the same SATA controller but in this case we're just going to use the one and it does help if I correct my typo here so just a small correction and there we go and that's done now at this point we haven't really done anything more complicated than you would do normally in the GUI so we're going to go on to the next part of this which is where the magic starts happening where we say okay we're going to create an unattended install and there's quite a number of parameters and depending on the OS you've got some of these parameters will also change so this is the example that we're using for the Ubuntu so this is a Linux based one um, Windows is slightly different because if you want to use things like the activation keys etc then you have to also parameterize those um, 
please consult the VirtualBox documentation for that because I'm not going to cover it right now. Uh, this is merely to get the overview of it. But please note, yes, it can be done. So here, the first one I'm using is the ISO. So this is the ISO, which is basically the boot uh, file. In this case, this is my Ubuntu CD image. Uh, I'm telling it my username. I'm going to tell it the password. And uh, after that, we're also going to specify the full username, the long one that is. So this is the one that displays as the title. Um, you can also specify things like time zones. Uh, my preferred one is always to set servers in particular to uh, UTC. I find it most valuable to do so. And you can also specify the host name. So you can tell it not just the host name, but also potentially the domain name that you want it to be associated with. That saves you a little bit of time later instead of needing to rename the host um, should you join it to a domain. So once that's entered, what you'll get is an output much like we have on the screen here, telling you that those are the values that it put into the unattended config file and then the name of the file. So at this point, that will be effectively mounted to the uh, VM. So if you see there, we actually have the unattended file as a mounted uh, CD drive image. So all we've got to do now to activate that is to just simply start the VM. Now, once that starts, and this is the bit where I'm going to tell you that I'm going to fast forward through the video because if we sat through it in real time this would be another 20 minutes and this is only a 12 minute video so as you can imagine we're going to speed this up quite some uh, amount and what happens is we, it runs the install same as you would normally but you're not going to get prompted for any of the information because it's already in the unattended install now obviously there are some benefits to this in terms of if you're building multiple machines you can kick them off and then walk away whilst in the conventional GUI approach you would normally be forced to be prompted maybe after five ten minutes please enter the username then another five ten minutes which disk do you want to format and so on and so forth which is not terribly useful if you want to do this in an automated way so this is where the unattended install kind of shines as it allows you to create the VMs very um, quickly and easily from the perspective of you put in the information and you let the install run. So here we have now our VM finished uh, to the point where I can now log on. So being able to now log on to the finished VM, we can prove that the unattended install worked, but equally it kind of took us a while to type out those commands and that's for the options of making mistakes, etc. So give or take the 20 minutes of speeded up video, even with just the commands, that's six, seven minutes lost or typing them out versus doing it differently. And by differently, what I mean is let's script it. So here's a function I've written. Don't worry, uh, you don't need to follow along on the screen on this one. There will be a link in the description below to GitHub where I'll paste a copy of the script. But just to prove a point, here we've created a PowerShell function that pretty much does the same as what we were typing in earlier with one or two very subtle differences. Um, one of them being that we've parameterized some of the information. So things like the amount of RAM, the amount of storage, the name of the VM, uh, the number of CPUs, things like that. So we're able to quickly enter the first of all the name so in this case we'll just call it uh, my test uh, and then we can enter in other information such as the number of uh, disks uh, sorry the size of the disk the number of processors and the amount of RAM now in this case I've kept them in gigabyte values and put the calculation into the script to turn them back to the megabytes which uh, VirtualBox is expecting now equally um, just to prove how quick and simple it is first of all you can see that single line has now generated our VM and started it up, unlike the multiple lines we needed to enter earlier. The other part of this is I'm going to shut down our original VM, mostly due to constraints on my machine with the number of CPUs that I can run at the same time. So I need to kind of get back some resources before I can kick it off again. And what I'll do is I'll start an unattended install for a second machine. So I'll just quickly save this one out and I'll go ahead and launch a second one in a very similar way. So again, if you think about the original one where we were typing for five, 10 minutes to get out all the commands, and here I just need to go back and change the machine name, and I effectively have now triggered off a duplicate machine. 
So while both are standalone and both are completely different, they're still following the same network values, the same password information. Everything in the unattended stall is identical. Now, just like before, what we're going to do is we're going to speed up the video because, again, 20 minutes, realistically, I'm sure you don't want to sit through. And if I didn't speed it up, this would now be a 40 minute video. So for the sake of everyone involved who's watching, we will fast forward to the end. Now, whilst the speeded up installation is running, uh, there is one other thing I want to point out. Think about the potential of how this would look if you had small images. Because here we have a full-blown uh, Ubuntu desktop, which is basically one of the bulkier images, all things considered. But you could be looking at a lightweight server installation or a small kernel where you've got a few hundred meg and this could take maybe five, ten minutes. So spinning up four, five, six of them quickly, really a nice option, um, particularly for lab testing purposes. And this is where the, the benefit of this comes in. In my case, where I want to test uh, software, the ability to spin up four or five instances to be able to test the front end, back end, and other parts of the configuration is an absolutely beautiful option. And I can do this by creating maybe a Windows machine for a domain controller, creating a couple of Linux machines, installing uh, the front end and back end software, so maybe MySQL on one, uh, installing you know Node.js on another, and vice versa, and all this kind of stuff. And I do it with relative ease knowing that I can just basically walk away. Now our two machines have finished the build and I'm just going to log into both of them and quickly run the terminal because I'll give you the host name and you can see that the host name is different and therefore each one is as we said per the script. Now that wraps up unattended install for guests on VMs. Um, hopefully if you like this video hit the like button and subscribe for more content.